Hey guys, and welcome to the third and final episode of Birthday May 2024. Today we'll complete this series by creating a lot of drama with, of course, a Bridgerton twist. So far we've looked at creating caricatures and also capturing likeness or resemblance in portraits. Today, however, I want to focus on what is arguably the most important aspect of the entire show, romance. Now, romance isn't just a couple posing together all cute. It's actually about the gentle drama, the soft haze of love, and the right lighting and colours that really set the mood. And no one really paints romance quite as good as the masters of old. So in today's video, we're going to draw a lot of inspiration from classical art and take a look at four compositional aspects that you can add to your painting in order to make it look warm and hazy, dramatic and very, very romantic. For inspiration, we're going to paint a portrait of a young Queen Charlotte, whom I've already gone ahead and painted for the most part, but we will tweak her a little as we go along today. I know technically this is a spin-off, but it is still the Bridgerton universe, so it counts, okay? As always, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe. Comment below your go-to compositional elements to add romance to your painting, and come say hello on Instagram and Discord. Links are down in the description below. Alrighty, without much further ado, let's dive into Bridgerton Month Episode 3, The Finale. Alrighty, so this is the reference we're working with today, which is India Amatifo playing a young Queen Charlotte in what is one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the entire show. I wanted to capture this moment because it's like a pivotal scene where she goes from wanting to be a wife and a queen and celebrating her wedding to realizing just how lonely she's about to be for the rest of her life. Like I said, I went in and painted most of the character because I wanted this video to be focused on how we can take a character against a plain background and change their entire image by creating a bit of drama and romance in the scene. For mood reference, I'm using some old classical paintings like this classic The Swing, this one called Springtime, and this one which is called, and please forgive my French, La Belle Dame Sans Merci. Yeah, I just unleashed a new revolution. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, let's dive right in. So the very first thing I noticed in a lot of these paintings is that the atmosphere seems really heavy, almost hazy. And that is usually indicated with some serious light bloom. You know, after it's just rained, how the heavy humidity in the air reflects the light from the sky and makes it all seem blurry and soft. That is just the most classic trope when it comes to painting romance. With this scene though, I wanted the added drama of night time since that is when this scene is set, but I didn't just want to copy the background from the still image, so I started by darkening the background big time. As a bonus, of course, that makes the rim light in her hair really, really pop. I painted in a deep navy blue into the upper half to sort of indicate a deep night sky and then decided to follow the lights on her. Since we have that bright, warm rim light in her hair, I decided to start with a soft, nondescript light source from the upper right corner. I literally colour matched her hair and gently painted in a bright spot which blends out into the darkness. Don't worry about the edges for just now, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a heavy Gaussian blur. That solitary light was looking too lonely though and we actually want to sort of semi-indicate a scene around her, so I went in and airbrushed a second smaller light bloom on the other side and then just to complete the rule of three, a third little one right behind her. Next we need to make sure she matches the lighting and actually fits into the scene. I started by creating some dark and light gradients, building shadow towards the bottom of the scene for some atmospheric perspective and then casting some soft light from the light sources. I then went about with an airbrush, refining the light and shadow so she didn't look super flat. 
Sometimes adding lights and shadows with the gradient tool can cause you to lose all that beautiful dimension that you've painted underneath because it's essentially a 2D sheet of colour overlaying a 3D form. So we need to make sure that we paint some of that dimension right back in. And finally, to really create a serious haze around her, I airbrushed some light just peeking out from behind her around that silhouette. And that way, it looks like the light that is bouncing off of her is creating this beautiful glowy aura wherever she goes. Finally, after some level adjustments, here's what we have after step one. Let's now populate the scene with elements that are traditionally associated with romance, starting with some flowers. Now, because these are going to be rather far into the background, I'm going to try and keep them really abstract, starting with just a dark green blob. I then added some lighter, warm little blobs facing the light source in order to create some dimension. Bear in mind, I am literally just using my basic chalk brush from my brush pack, nothing fancy at all. We're not trying for detail at this point, we're literally just indicating it in a very distant, blurry way. Starting with large, dark and desaturated brush strokes, then making the brush smaller and creating brighter, more saturated texture where the light hits. Same with the flowers, I started big and deep with a desaturated red, then got brighter and more intense with the indication of the smaller details that might catch the light. I also painted a second smaller bush by the other light, again just trying to make sure the scene looks balanced. And just like we did with Charlotte herself, we add lights and shadows to make the plants match the scene lighting. The other thing we tend to associate with romance is a starry night sky. Plus, in the show, Charlotte's husband, George, is actually really obsessed with outer space, has his own observatory and everything. So I thought a very starry sky would also be perfect when it comes to storytelling with this character in particular. I just used some random dust, floating speck and star brushes and crowded the dark open space that wasn't being lit by the street lamps. The final element of romance, well, to me, these are rather romantic, are a little pair of doves. I mostly just freehanded these perched on that far plant with no reference and I wanted the top one to have a little crest because I'm obsessed with that one post online where one of these crested pigeons kept undoing someone's shoelaces. Oh yeah, inspiration comes in many forms. I also just added even more shadow just under her cloak to drive even more focus up to her face and this is what we have after step two. All right, number three, a gentle breeze. Nothing says romance quite like a soft breeze floating past on a midnight stroll. However, a breeze is invisible, it is something you feel, and so in order to show it in visual art, we have to be clever and instead think about which elements would in fact move with the breeze. Fabric is an easy one, and while it would be fun to really throw her cloak around, I don't want to take away too much from her poise, so we're just going to subtly shift her cape a little bit to screen right. Nothing too dramatic, just painting an extension to the right and pulling in that cloak on screen left so it looks shifted to one side. Okay, the next bit would likely be more obvious to indicate if a character has long straight hair, but Charlotte here has very dense textured hair, so showing the wind in it is a little more challenging. What I did was start by using this really cool curl brush. I think I got it in the Fizzy Flower Essential Brush Pack, which is a free download, I'll link it below, because I love you and we don't gatekeep on this channel. I think just adding this little texture detail just around the edges really helped make the hair more dynamic, but just like we did with the cloak, I also stretched out the hair towards screen right just a little bit, just to create that subtle movement. And the most obvious and my absolute favourite way of indicating breeze is by creating floating elements. 
Since this is a very floral scene, we gotta have floating petals. I actually have this brush in my own brush pack, which you can grab on Patreon if you really want to, but really most dust or particle brushes do the trick just fine. Adding floating leaves and petals really amp up the breeze because it makes it look like the wind is strong enough to loosen leaves and petals off the plant. And just for a little more of the old razzle dazzle, I threw in some floating specks around the lights. My regular viewers already know I love me some floating specks. And now we have a more dynamic painting after step three. For our final step today, we're gonna get a little more experimental and really undo most of the work that we've done so far. No, no, trust me, it'll be worth it. We're gonna add even more haze to the whole scene. I started by grabbing the round airbrush and very softly indicating thick beams of light going out diagonally from the two big light sources. Already it's starting to make everything look super bright and almost nondescript. But the next step is where I need you to have a little bit of faith in the process. I saved my working file as a PSD and fired up Photoshop. What we're going to do is make a copy of the paint layer, then apply a hefty motion blur to the copy. The reason I switched to Photoshop is because the Krita motion blur filter just doesn't have a distance wide enough for me personally. I paint on an 8K canvas, so like a thousand pixel motion blur is basically just a slight Gaussian. So I switched to Photoshop to really get that visible directional blur going. Now, it's a little crazy right now, but this is why we've done it on a copy of the paint layer. Because now, when we import back into Krita, we can just peel away the blurred layer and the original is just fine underneath. But using a transparency mask, I'm going to gradually reveal some of that blurring right back in. I stuck mostly to the light sources, as well as some of that light bloom around her silhouette. This may seem like an extra step, but in my opinion, it just really takes the romance to a whole other level. I feel like love clouds our vision and makes everything feel all hazy and soft and like rose tinted and also very, very fast paced. And that motion blur really has an impact on the overall mood of the piece and really ties it all together. Finally, I went about just refining areas that I felt needed some extra attention, colour shifting some more pinks and blues into the piece to balance out all the warmth. And here's the finished piece, and I would genuinely drop everything to be in this environment right now. Look how good that looks. So there we go, we have officially finished Birthday May 2024. Next week we'll dive into a very special style study, but for now I really want to thank you guys for indulging me this month and my art goals, and I really do hope these videos have been helpful for you as well. What was your favourite tip from this video? Are there any other tips you have for painting romance into your pieces that you think I've missed out? Comment below and let me know, and of course if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe. Come say hello on Instagram and Discord, links to both of those are down in the description below. If you enjoy what I do and would like to see more of it and grab all the exclusive content such as all the speed paints from start to finish, including the process of me painting Charlotte from scratch in today's video, um, as well as my brush kit and also some cool prints every few months, you can check it all out on my Patreon. Your support goes a long way in allowing me to do all the stuff that I keep doing every single week. So thank you so much for taking the time. I'll leave a link here in the cards and in the description. And thank you so much for checking it out. Alrighty, you guys, that's about everything I wanted to say for today's video. So thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you're looking for some tips on how you can achieve resemblance when you paint portraits, that's exactly what we talked about last week. So I'll leave that video down here in the outro. Make sure you check it out. There's a lot to learn from it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.